are we going to see pancake swap go over a hundred dollars in 2022 it's likely yes it's likely as a 20x and we're not talking about tomorrow <laughs> we're talking about six months we're talking about six months and i'm going to show you the technical psychological of buying selling behavior reason why in today's content so like subscribe hit the bell notification if you don't know me by now my name is Chigi I'm the award-winning author of the extraordinary new venture capital opportunity how to invest like a pro been featured in the best-selling book high probability trading strategies back in 2008 where I only used to focus on currencies but now exclusive on cryptocurrency let's dive straight in so PancakeSwap is the major DEX decentralized exchange for the Binance Smart Chain, which is EVM compatible, just cheap, and it's fast, and it's been quite popular, especially when gas fees on Ethereum can be incredibly high in peak times. CoinMarketCap tells us the current price is $4.42, market cap is $1.3 billion, and the volume is just under $100 million. It's around just 7% of the market cap in itself and is ranked number 44, right? So let's just look at the technicals, right? We're looking at technicals. Now, when I say technicals, what we're looking at, the context that I'm giving here from the technical analysis is what is the psychological mood of the buying and selling behavior based on all the participants? Now, what we can clearly see from all the participants that got eyeballs on PancakeSwap in February, January, February uh, 2021, just impulsive, right? It was under a dollar, it was around 30, 40, 50 cents. And it would have sounded crazy to think we were going to get this initial pump, right? It's $20, a 40x pullback. And then we had this massive drive all the way up to what? Just under $50, around $40. It's like 80x from down there, 80, 90, almost 100x from over here. And then we would have done videos earlier on this year, I think it was last year actually that we said this is unlikely to be the completion of a correction. One, is too short in time, but two, look how impulsive it is. Like, like it's too, too down. Corrective waves have a, like an overlapping structure. So what looks like the case now, now that we've got the information, it looks like a nice wave A, a three wave structure of an A, B, C of a B, and then this wave C, right? Most corrections finish in three waves. And this over here is called a wave two, which is a retest of wave one. And there's typical ratios. Now, this red line is a typical Fibonacci ratio. You can see we've gone below it. I've got some other price relationships. I won't cover the detail of it today, but I'm just measuring the, the waves, this wave compared to this wave, and then this wave compared to this wave. There's particular relationships that you want to be aware of. Now, we've got this price zone down here. So I'm just going to draw a box and say, look, we've got a high probability price zone down here. Now, we're coming towards the end of... A very big correction, forty dollars all the way down to like 95 percent, all the way down to like four, three, four dollars, right? Big correction. So the big question is, what normally happens after a big correction? So just to make sure we're on the same page, this is what I'm talking about. This correction here, three wave structure is what I'm seeing. A, B, C, right? That's what we're looking at. A couple of other factors before we do some projections on like Jagir, why the heck do you say hundred dollars? Sounds insane. Do you know do you not know we're in a bear market? Uh, I go, yeah, I do. Um, but markets move through cycle and trends. It's all based on fear and greed. When the pullbacks happen, people start to go, okay, it's on a discount now. And then sometimes the buyers come back in, sometimes more often than not. And that's what we're going by. We're going by the probability. I'm also gonna go into top left hand corner, this chart over here. This is the stochastics RSI. And it tells us that the momentum, the blue and the red line, is something called oversold, means the downside should be limited and we should be coming close towards an end of a potential major point. And when that coincides with pattern and price, which is what we're seeing over here, pattern being this A, B, C, and then the C breaking down into what looks like a one, two, three, four, and a potential final five. Right? So we've got three degrees of wave counts. A wave five of a C of a two. I feel like, what? <laughs> Take my free Elliott Wave Fibonacci Masterclass. I actually cover this in more depth. If you're new to Elliott Waves, I cover how to do the five wave counts and what's the logic, the method behind the madness and how the Fibonacci ratios combine to those waves so you can get a feel for the psychological mood and tells us with high probability what's likely to occur next. Uh, I send the link below, by the way. Link below, you get instant access. Click, click, and off you go. 
So what we want to look at now, I'm just going to zoom in, and I'm going to do some projections to finish up. Now, it's high risk to just buy, just buy any, any point, right? It depends on your method, right? It depends on your method. If you're more like a retail venture capitalist and you're happy holding through some, you know, potentially going from $4 down to maybe $2, right? It could be another 50% from where it is today, right? That can make a significant difference. What's best practice is to wait for a swing high to be exceeded, right? This is the most obvious recent swing high. But if we do get one more move to the downside like this, we might get another swing high over here, right? And then we want to be aware of those to potentially be able to go long. But what, I don't want to get into too much detail there. What I want to do to finish up on today is, I've already done this, I think. Did I do it already? Yes, I have. I've done some wave three projections. You go, what? What do you mean? Three wave three, you get? I go, well, after a wave two, which is a corrective wave, tends to come the most impulsive, powerful wave called a wave three. And in the, in the master class, by the way, I cover wave threes, the, the typical ratios. The, the one that you want to be most aware of is the wave three is 1.618. Right? We measure this whole wave one, we project it from this low here, and it gives us this number. And then the overextension, and the crypto is relatively common, overextension is 2.618. And that's the $100. Look, $2.618 is $113. And the typical $1.618 is $70. So $70 from today's price. Let's say we do get back down to $2, right? $2 to go from $2 to $70. That's a 35x. Jeez, that's like, yeah. So that's, you know, pretty significant. 20 to 30x. And then if it does get to $100, and if we go down to $2, then we're talking about 50x. So 20 to 50x is potential if you can get your buying position with PancakeSwap in the right place. But this is what we're looking at. And it sounds absurd, maybe even a bit crazy, because I know there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the market. Uh, there's there's people been absolutely destroyed. Look at this massive, it's like a 90% pullback. Right? Imagine there were people, cause you got you gotta remember, there's a zero-sum game. For there to be winners, there has to be losers. And that's it's like, it's like crypto tennis, right? For it to be to be a winner of Wimbledon there has to be a loser, right? And that's how it works with the markets. It's, there's this market flow and deal flow and there's the bulls and the bears. So there would have been people buying over here and people selling over here. And obviously the sellers overtook the buyers. That's why the price goes down and then we go up and then down again. So now the buyers, the bulls, are likely to come back into town at some point in the coming, I reckon, four weeks, four weeks, mid-June mid-June, and we'll probably see a surge. It won't be in a line like this. It'll be more something like the following. It'll, it'll be like this, what we saw over here. Um, a move up, a correction, a move up, a correction, a move up, and then a big correction, right? And that will tend to happen again. And it's repetitive. That's what Ralph Nelson Elliott figured out. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about Elliott waves. You figure out the market moves in trends and cycles and trends. It was more often than not something like this. That will do for now. All right, we're talking about these these big corrections like this, right? Something like this, more than likely. And then guess what? Like this big wave two correction, after a wave three, more often than not, we'll get a wave four correction, right? So we don't need to go too far into the future until until we see this happening. But just be aware if you're holding pancakes up, the outlook doesn't mean it's guaranteed. It's probabilities, never certainties is positive. I am an optimistic guy, but I'm also a realist. So if we end up breaking this swing high over here, then, and this low holds, and we definitely, if we exceed this high, this wave one high, the likely price target as a minimum is normally 1.618, which is $71. Overextension, 2.618, $113. So there you have it, there you have it. So if you want to learn how to do Elliott Wave, take my free Elliott Wave Fibonacci Masterclass, I break down the basics, the fives, the threes, the three key rules that you need to know when it comes to Elliott Wave, and then how to really bake in the basic relationships with Fibonacci ratios. So don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, support the channel, and let's read a quote, finish on a quote. Quote of the day is, let's go with, let's go with, which chapter five? Chapter five. 
Let's go. Oh, we go with chapter four. No, no, we go with five. We go with five. There we go. Five, five. All right, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, the the title, the, the subtitle of the of the book on the, this chapter five is my book. It's, uh, becoming financially free is simple but not easy. Right? It's simple, as in the the things you have to do is simple, but the psychology of it is not easy. Not easy. Anyway, Leonardo da Vinci says simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, and one of the reasons I absolutely adore love. The methodology of Elliott waves combined with Fibonacci ratios and momentum is that it's simple, it's consistent, it is objective, it's mechanical, and non-emotional. All right, so let's watch out for pancake top. Let's see if we do get a clear low. We want a signal. If we do get that signal, then there might be some good buying opportunities. All right, have a good day, and I'll see you very soon.